everyone. I'm super, super excited. You know, this is going to be our first episode. And you know what? I'm so blessed to have a good friend of mine, Mitch. You know, so, you know, for him to make the time to come down means a lot to me, especially after yesterday. He had his father's doco, which is phenomenal, right? Because, you know, it's real. And that's what I love about it. And, you know, it's so cool to see people talk about things that, you know, a lot of people don't see in real life. And, and even not as so much see, but what a lot of people don't talk about too. I think, like, I don't know, we're sort of used to going through life in the past, especially for the older generation, like my dad and, yeah. you know, yourself, that, like, that, there's a bit of stigma around, you know, mental health and talking about your problems and stuff like that, so I don't know, I, I can see a bit of a shift happening, and I, I think it's good, bro. It is, and you're 100% right, because we are taught as men that it's weak to talk about <laughs> your problems and stuff, right? But it's actually not weak, it actually takes a bigger person to talk, to talk, but not just for them, but what they're doing is actually they're sacrificing because they want other people, because there's so many other people out there that have the same problems. Correct, so he's, that's not doing that for himself, he's doing that for everyone else. Awareness, right? Yep. To bring it out, start talking about it. So bro, like, you know, we've met just, what, a couple of months now, you know, yeah. so I've, I don't like to read up on people, alright, and I don't like to ask a lot of questions, alright? Yep. But today I will ask you a lot of questions. That's good, I but I, I like that you. because exactly we like we know each other, but yeah. not like not in detail. We, yeah, I guess like when you meet, I don't know. I've got a thing where I meet other entrepreneurs. I don't like to get straight into like getting to know their business yeah. and like stuff yeah. like that. I like to get to know them as a person. So I guess yeah. we've got to know each other a bit as a person, person. like family, yeah. friends, and stuff like that. But I guess yeah, there's a lot to talk about. So tell me, wise. how old are you? I'm 23 years old. Jesus, you're a baby. Right? Baby. So tell me. Born in Melbourne? Yep, born yeah. in Melbourne. I've lived in Melbourne my whole life, but I recently moved to Gold Coast three or four weeks ago. Oh, good. So, how many sisters and brothers? I have an older brother who yep. is 26 and yep. a younger sister who's about to turn 21. Okay, so tell me this thing which I, hadn't, I didn't know about because I'm 42, so I missed that <laughs> YouTube phase, right? And the guys are like, hey, crazy dad, crazy I'm like, what's crazy, <laughs> crazy dad? dad? And then I watched the video and I couldn't stop laughing. So how did that all start? Is that where you guys started or was that the yeah, original I'll, thing? I guess, like... As the key word with everything is like authentically. Yeah. We started extremely authentically, whereas my family, we come from a generation of people that just take the piss out of each other and always have before yeah. cameras, after cameras. Yeah. There was always pranks going on, there was always laughter, there was yeah. always fun. Nothing's changed. Yeah. But then I know we struck the golden era of social media and we were one of those people that I guess was smart enough to capitalize and put a, a bit of time into filming it and uploading it. You know, we never really cared about production quality or time effort, but I guess we always kept the pranks authentic. Yeah. We always put time into it, and I know we're one of those people that struck viral, I guess you'd say. And yeah, it, it took off from there, but it's been probably four or five years of us, you know, fucking around with our dad. <laughs> so you're still doing it? Not, not as much not now. As much. We've yeah. sort of grown up a bit. My brother's got a kid now. I've got a kid on the way. I live in Gold Coast. Yeah. But that being said, if there's a time to do it, we will do it. You know what I mean? There you go. So tell me, because this is actually really cool. Because people always talk to me about, okay, where do I start? What do I do? How do I start a business? Yeah. But you guys originally did this because you were just having fun. That was the whole thing, wasn't it? And, and, and to be honest, with that, I still, I still stick to that by saying people always are looking for the next thing what can I do to do this if you do something you're passionate about you yeah. enjoy you love it comes naturally the success yeah. around anything comes naturally I never once filmed a video to get likes yeah. or to get attention see <laughs> see, see you enjoyed it so that's why I did it I, yeah, I, I mean like this is the thing people think like yeah it's so easy for you to film and do your pranks and stuff because you had such a big following we didn't at the start, at the start you did it. we had no one but we did it because we loved it we thought it was funny we thought you know we thought dad going off doing this little thing soon was hilarious so we filmed it we put our time into it yeah. we uploaded it you know no one could have watched it we still would have done it exactly right so that was the key to it all we never once did it thinking Let's, if we upload this on this day, this then, this then, this then, we're going to end up with fucking 100,000 people liking the page in the first three months. Yeah. That's our first goal. Nah. It wasn't about Just that. Just find something you love. Find something that's like you're passionate about yeah. and just go and do it. Like that's all we did. That's yeah. literally all we did. And then it just blew up because and it blew up because you were passionate about it. Yeah. Because you were enjoying it. It was real and you were having fun with it. And also like... 
because we stuck we stuck to what we did and we stuck to the basics. Yeah. Like a lot of people, once you know something like that happens, you know you get money thrown at you, you get different things yeah. thrown at you, where you could easily start setting things up and trying to film every yeah. day and getting your dad in on yeah. it. Having you know, there's a room for. If we had to set things up, we could have produced three, four more videos a week. That's which correct, but it wouldn't have been as real. It wouldn't have been as, as, as real and organic, and you people drop off. So I don't know. There's 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 almost like a, a key to it, which is like always stick to the, your roots. What start, what you got you there, stick yeah. to it. And that's what we did with the Angry Dad stuff. We knew what the people like, yeah. and we stuck to it. Even production quality, you know. I remember one day we got like it filmed really awesomely. I never went as well because yeah. people see production quality pick up and they go, "Oh, is this now set up? They got a camera crew." You know, it's just weird for people. Yeah. We still to this day, every single video we've done has been filmed off our iPhone. See what I mean? And that's the thing because. Actually, at the same time, it doesn't put pressure on you to be a certain character. Exactly. You do it as you are, like, and that's the thing with this show. It's all about there's no, you know, there's no script. We caught up this morning. We jumped in the car. Yeah. And we're just talking, right? And that's the, what keeps it real. And, and people want that. I mean, like, I don't know about you, but there's yeah. nothing worse than when you, you know, you sit down, you have a conversation with someone, and it feels structured. I can't do it. No, I, I start stuttering. Yeah. I start falling apart, man. Like if I have to do a script, I start stuttering. I start shaking. I can't do it. It's not natural. You know what I mean? Exactly. Like, I, and I love how I love how social media and YouTube and everything is really gravitating towards authentic people yeah. now. Once upon a time, it was you know people with their fake lifestyles, their fake yeah. this that everyone yeah. wanted and everyone yeah. was interested in. Now people want to see stimulating conversations, just yeah. high level, like nice, kind people. Yeah. I mean. Oh, let me tell you something about Sam. Like I've only known Sam for probably two or three months. Yeah. He's one of the most humble and nice people that you'll ever meet. Thank and you. you know, he, for someone who thank has you. a lot but no, has come you. from nothing, he's still there's not one part about him that separates him from someone like me or someone like you guys that are watching. Thank you, man. I'm, and you know what? To me, you know, my dad told me a long time ago, you never know who you need on your way down. Always be nice. It doesn't cost you anything to be nice. Yep. And just be genuine and humble. And you know what? You gotta be yourself, and that's what makes you authentic, and that's what makes you unique. You know. Yeah. And and the best part about all this is, it's it's a hundred percent. The world is gravitating towards it. Whereas, I think for the first two or three years of social media, yeah. it was so easy to have facades and to set up these fake lives yeah. and to, to to grab people's attention and make them wanna. Yeah. The best thing that I ever learned was like I, I used to I used to I was guilty of doing it, man. I, I lost like. It's, it's pretty funny because I had a falling out with a friend at a time who stopped talking to me, everything like that, and it was purely because he hated what I was doing with my social media. You know, I was uploading photos of cars and yeah. fake watches and all this yeah. stuff because yeah. I thought this is what the people wanted, wanted to see. To see. Uh, but what I what I what became a lot more important to me was I wanted people to look at me and go, you know what, I want to be this person, not have what this person has. That was what was a massive change for me. Yeah. So instead of fucking, you know trying to get people to be obsessed with what I had or what yeah. I didn't have I just wanted to be like you know what I'm going to be a great person do great things and want people to be like me not have what I have and you know what mate it's funny you say that because you're so young still and for you to recognise that uh, uh, there's kudos to your parents yeah. and the people you surround yourself with because at the end of the day you're very young very impressionable at the end of the day right but to be recognise that and to do that at your age and you know I always say to people change can happen anytime, yeah. right? You are in charge of who you become and what you do. Exactly. Nobody else, right? And you know what? People won't like it sometimes that you change, right? But for me now, you know, for me, because I, I missed out on that stage of going out and all that when I was young, right? Because yeah. I was too busy hustling and I didn't have the Instagram stuff, so I had to do like, you know, yeah. door knock and all that kind of stuff, right? So I got to go out a little bit later, you know, and I always worried about, oh, am I going to disappoint someone? I'm going to upset someone and so on. And then I realized, you know what? It's all about me at the end of the day, about me making sure that I'm happy with my actions and my, how I behave and what I do. Exactly. And right. people that love me, they will stick around and they will still be my friends. You know, and it's only the fake ones that drop off. <laughs> it's like they be shooting one of them around anyway, you know? I, um, I spoke on the official Men's Health podcast yeah. okay, yeah, yeah. in a Men's Health right, magazine yeah, yeah, yeah. like two weeks ago. It's yeah. still not out yet. Yeah. But we were talking about, and there was this guy, this is so cool, you'll love this. There was a guy in America, he was an Australian guy. Yeah. Anyway, he went over to America and he yeah. had um, 
he didn't have any friends over there. He had yeah. his family and his kids went to school and everything like that. Yeah. And he was really struggling with yeah. his mental health and not having friends and not yeah. having people to talk to. Anyway, he went on to the school newsletter. Yeah. Grabbed all the dad's emails from yeah. the school, his yeah. kid's school. Yeah. Sent out a group email, email. and said, hey guys, um, I'm from Australia. Yeah. I've just, you know, I don't have many friends and yeah. stuff like that. I've been, you know, doing it a bit tough no. here. Yeah. I'm, um, I'm opening up my garage to yeah. on Friday after school. If any of you dads want to come around and just yeah. sit around and talk, yeah. have a beer, and we'll, you know, yeah. just conversation flow. I think 27 or something dads rocked up, up to it. See what I mean. And now they call it uh, garage talk. And every oh, Friday, they, cool. uh, this garage talk where all these like dads and stuff yeah. like come sit around and they just talk. See. And that's all you do. And it doesn't cost but, anything. We but just also, one, it just took one person to, to make reach that out. Because yeah. clearly there's another 27 people going uh, through something similar. Otherwise, they wouldn't have rocked up. And you, don't, and, you don't, and you don't see that because it's all hidden yeah. behind your you know, behind your house, behind your the doors. No one sees yeah. that. Everybody sees what they see outside. But they don't see what's going on inside. Inside, And we're afraid to talk about it because it's so like, oh, it's frowned upon. Or it's looked yeah. down on. Oh, and a lot of it's like, ego-based. Too. Everyone's too scared right. to get their ego in the way. And... 100% because they don't want to get judged. People don't want to get judged, but when people of high profile and start talk, start talking about it, becomes it, accepted. Yeah, man, it's okay, dude. And you know what, bro? Like, it has that sense of community, and it brings people together. Yep. And it's so lovely. Like, well, to actually be but what better way to connect with someone than to go through something? You know what I mean? Because you understand if, it. So if I meet someone and they've yeah. gone through what I've been yeah. through, immediately I feel thirty yeah. percent more closer and connected because I'm like, they can actually understand. Understand me. No matter what, how successful you get in yeah. your work, your career, whatever you're doing, yeah. still the most beautiful part and most rewarding part at the end of any day is going to be always family. 100%, so if man. you've got family, you've got friends, you've got a partner and stuff like that, you've already got the best thing there is, you know what 100%. I mean? You've got the best support system and they'll be there no matter what. They don't care about Which what you Which is have. like another like, reason why I think like people need to always make sure you still, doesn't matter how hard you want to, how much you want it or how hard you always put your friends and your family first. Spot on. Because I feel like a lot of people, you know, get lost up on, like, lost in trying yeah, yeah. to get everything and they forget, they, the, main they forget the main things. Oh, and then, you the know, you hear so many stories about people, you know, who work, that give, dedicate their fucking life to work oh. and then they finally get it, yet they've lost their ma- wife in the meantime, they've lost their kids, they've lost oh. their connection to everything but their work and then they get it, but then oh. they've got nothing. Exactly. So that brings me to actually, it's interesting to say that. So... I've met a lot of very successful people. Like, I never ever went to school and learned how to run a business. I went on a journey and I learned it on my own, like you have, right? Um, and one of the things that I learned from a lot of successful people and I kept hearing was meditation, 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 right? <laughs> and I sat there, I tried to meditate, I couldn't do it, right? After five minutes, I started laughing, I couldn't do it, right? So I found that for me, my meditation was to go around here at Botanica Gardens yeah. in Melbourne and turn my phone off and go for a half an hour walk, right? And just switch off. Perfect. Yeah, and I used to walk around, I used to see things and I used to sit there and go, make me stop and realize, wow, how lucky and blessed I am to be where I am in my life and to appreciate what I have. And then I worked up from there, and this is not scripted, this is actually funny, came up. I started, like, at night now, my girls, both Lauren, Olivia, and Ange, right? They listen to meditation music and stuff, right? So that brings me to this. And I don't, again, I don't know a lot about this. So Chloe, yeah. your partner, right? So so tell me, uh, what's it, she, she's got something to do with meditation. Is that right? And can I ask you, because I don't, I don't know anything, so how did that come about? And what's it about? And how, how's that going? So... Chloe, I don't know if you're watching this, Chloe Zepp, she's my partner of nearly five years. She's um, an extremely successful entrepreneur. She's only 21 years old. Phenomenal. She's got two businesses. She's got uh, uh, an active wear company that yep. has just scaled out of control. Ooh, like cool. she's, she's a monster. You've seen some of yeah. it. Some of the, yeah, yeah. The, the analytics and statistics yeah, behind yeah. it. It's, it's a beast. On top of that, she's got a mental health app. So how did that come about? So well, There's obviously a reason behind the, it. Yeah. yeah, so I'll explain this, the story. So me and my girlfriend, we went through a bit of hard times. A lot of it was to do with my yeah. drinking and drug use. As you know, I'm, I'm sober now. I have been for months. I love that, bro. God but I, uh, I, you know, this is the thing. What happens in life is you get excited, you get carried away. And my thing was I went through a lot at a young age. I had money. I had, you know friends in high places I had all this stuff that was so appealing to me that I lost track of what was close to me so my girlfriend 
she was a bit we, we, we obviously when we started we were yeah. a bit on the same path yeah, but yeah. she started to outgrow me I love so she world. started growing and she was growing at a rapid speed I wasn't I was still stuck in my own way so what happened was she actually said I'm gonna go away to America do you mind and the obnoxious me thought nothing of it just yeah, yeah whatever I'll party while yeah. you're yeah. out I don't yeah. care yeah. Yeah. like yeah. go Anyway, she went over there for a month. In that month, I probably only heard from her three times. Okay, yeah. She went over there and she did mindfulness, spirituality. She did all these meditations and yogas and all these different things. Yep. Anyway, she came back. And when I when I say this, she came back a brand new person. So like she no reset. One, so, but, like, she was never really that mentally strong. She was yeah. never... She was a a warrior a yeah, mental yeah, warrior yeah, yeah. nothing could penetrate her mind yeah. nothing could get through to her happiness nothing could affect her we went through a lot of shit over that of next course, last yeah, few yeah. weeks like when she got back yeah, yeah. and she was untouchable so <laughs> she um so yeah so she, and then we were like okay I was like this is like this is crazy to me because I was yeah. like I, I, I feel like you've just you know, transformed who you are as a person in one month. Yeah. But I don't know what you've done. Anyway, so her and her friend, because her best friend went through a really ugly divorce. She was with a partner for 12 to 15 years. She went yeah. through a divorce. They went away together. They both came back and they just had this like life bond together yeah. with all the, these tools. And they said, well, and a lot of people noticed in Chloe too. They said, what? Like, the change. Change. Like, you're like, what's, God, what, what's, what's, what's going yeah. on? Yeah. So I said to them, you know, you guys have these tools now. Yeah. You, you just need to put these tools to use. Yeah. So they sat down and they said, let's turn this into a, a well-being and mindfulness app. They okay. wrote down everything that they that did. They went they through. So what they went through, what I the tools it. they used every day, the meditations, the guided meditations, the yogas they were doing, and they put it all into this hub. And it was about, it's called Bloom, but it's all about blooming into a better you. I like so that. So they'll plant the seed and you yeah. can track your Check flowers, it, yeah. all this different stuff. And man, it's been crazy, bro. They've got, I think, 10,000 subscribers Amazing. on the app now. It's real. It's helping people, man. And I love it. See, and I didn't know this story. And it's so real. I didn't know this that is story. Why, this is why it works, though, because uh, there's like man, there's a community on Facebook with over 6,000 members of it just yeah. talking about how their life's changed it, from this app and how every day they used to wake up with anxiety. Bro, well, they did a Bloom talk, at, at the, which I spoke at, and there was a mum in the crowd that stood up and started bawling her eyes out and said her daughter couldn't even go to work, couldn't get a job. She was riddled with anxiety. She couldn't talk to people. And since yeah. this app, Check she's got life. a job. She had, hangs out with friends. She wakes up today. She doesn't have anxiety. All stuff. Just from doing like these little tools every single day from an, like, it, it's crazy, man. Because, because it's real. And you know what? I want to say thank you for, first of all, opening up. And I want to share this too. You know, I've been through that, man. I've been through the, all that stuff as well, right? Yeah. The partying stuff. Because again, I went from having nothing to having access to a lot of money. Everybody thought I was the king. Yep. Everybody gave me everything. And you know, it's not because... And there's a stigma that you're a bad person. You're not a bad person. No. You're just actually a nice person. You just get caught up in there because you're actually not sneaky or shifty. Yep. So you just get sucked but also into generous too. Yeah, generous. Becomes a, being so, generous becomes a massive part of it because yeah. I want to make sure everyone Everybody around me is having fun and, and always 100%. happy. 100%. But that you're was suffering. My way but we're the ones that are suffering. Correct. So, you know, and I'm going to a gym, so I'm going to tap into this thing. Right? And I'm learning a lot from it. And, like, it's fantastic. But this is what I love, you know, about you and your partner that you guys have done. You didn't keep it yourself. You yeah. said, well, this has worked for us. It's changed our life. Let's share it. Let's share it with the community. Let's share it with the people that are out there that can benefit from it because I know how it feels. I know how it yeah. feels to be there and I know how it feels to be here and how, why can't I give that gift to everybody else? Well, this is where I think we, we have a social responsibility to do so because I don't think it's fair that we can only share our highlights yeah. and expect everyone to, to watch us and go, these guys have the best, most perfect relationship yeah. in life. I want it. I it's want unfair because yeah. it's not real. It's not they need to see what goes on as well in the bad. You the need bat. to see the bad as much as the, as good. the good. Otherwise, it, it, it's fake. You it know what fake. I mean? And 100%. people can't relate to that. Nah, 100%. You know, like, we, me and Chloe have been so transparent about every part of our life because it's authentic and real and people oh, can well relate done. and it helps people come along with your journey. You know, no one, no, no one's interested in just the destination. They want to see the whole the journey. journey. And how will get, get there? You there. You know, they want to see, oh. like we, we, I remember we did a video once and it was because we moved out from each other. We've been yeah. together okay. three years. We yeah. moved out. Yeah, yeah like, and we made a video and told everyone we're like, hey, like, because this is the thing. People are going to see it anyway. But it happens every day to other people. Yeah. People are going to see that we've moved out anyway. So we just explained that you know we're going through some shit. We are both trying to get happy as individuals before we can be happy together. together. 
So we did it, but I remember Daily Mail, all these different things grabbed it, like a couple live separately and get like amazing responses. But it was people that have just said, this is so beautiful. Like, it's real. I'm trying this with my partner now because we don't know what to do. But it's like, all we did was sort of share it. Share it. We opened up. And ever, and opened yeah. up but we worked that everyone else was going Go through, through it or wanting stuff. to do it anyway. It's, you know, see, that's the thing. And I love that about you, man, because as I get to know you and I'm finding more and more and more about you, it's I'm getting this thing that you know we were generous with our money and helped a lot of our friends and did stuff but now we've taken it to the next level we are sharing our feelings our yeah. emotions and our journey which you can't even put a price on nope. because that can benefit so many people and right. I love that you're doing that that's awesome and it's the, uh, it's such a great way to reach so many different people at like once without yeah. even knowing the effects that you're having on people yeah. 100%. I started a new thing recently just on my page called Today's Bible. Every morning I'll okay. post a quote that I'll try said to live by for the day. I like that. I'll just call it Today's Bible. And like it's only been a few weeks and already yeah. bro, people are loving it. And it's like it's all they want is just a bit of, you know, spread a bit of positivity. You know 100%. what I mean? Like, and does it cost you anything? Yeah. So tell me. I'm, I'm learning so much about it. <laughs> um, so tell me. I know. I know. Um, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to actually be as real as possible about this and really share my thoughts, okay? So I know we had the bushfires, which yep. is tragic, right? And it's, it's just impacted our country so much, right? Um, and I know that you got involved yep. uh, quite heavily, but what I, and please correct me if I'm wrong, because yep. I just went by what I saw, I haven't really spoken to you about it, right? Um, one of the things that really um, I loved about what you did was you raised a lot of money. How much did you raise? Uh, so I, st I did a first raise when it, you know when they started in around November December yeah, they were yeah. a bit smaller. I did yeah. a raise then and I raised seventy three grand. Yeah. Then when they picked up again in what was it Feb or January? Uh, yeah, Feb, uh, yeah, yeah. I raised another two hundred and seventy. Wow, man, that's so phenomenal. Three hundred fifty k all up. That's phenomenal, right? And then there's a lot of people raising a lot of money. Okay, yep. that's great. But yep. then I love what you did next. <laughs> what you did next meant more to me than the money raising, right? But obviously you had to raise the money to be able to do what you did next, I understand that. But what I loved the most was that you actually put everything in the car yeah. and you went out. And tell me about that. You went and met the community. You actually took days off and correct me if I'm wrong, but you were in Gold Coast, you came back to Melbourne. Yeah, I flew home. Okay, and then tell me what you did because I, I, I love that. Okay, so to me, I don't know, I think... Well, I learned from my first raise actually I learned from the first raise I raised that $73,000 and I donated it and I felt I felt like I didn't do enough yeah. I don't know I know it seems silly to say that yeah. but I felt like I had an opportunity to do more so yeah. on the next one I raised 270 grand and I thought I I can't just hand over these checks and not no, it's know it's going, where it's, it's happening. Going. Yeah. But, and but also not just know the effects of everything around. I just didn't. It felt like I was still too distant from it all. So I got home yeah. and I set up about three or four days worth of. I think I drove for about sixteen hours a day, nearly a day. I, I, yeah, I drove. I think oh I can't even. I I was I woke up at first day. I woke up at three thirty and I was driving till about. I got home, I think, at about 10 p.m. the next day. Yeah. The next day, I did the same. Yeah. But I um, I went to all different uh, parts and communities. Of, uh, I went up to Coralong, uh, Walwa. I went to the East Gippsland. I went all different places, but we organized 18 trucks worth of supplies. 18 trucks? 18 trucks worth of hay. Over, I think it was like 90,000 litres of water, supplies. By the way, this was on top of the donations. We did this with... Um, LVL group and then a few of the other guys. Yep. We um yeah, so we just did that. We went out and we met them. I was doing, gave. I went to like the different part, like little like. So for instance, this is a, such a beautiful story. We walked yeah, into a pub in there, and you know, because this is what people don't understand. Where some people were trying to help, yep. it actually wasn't helping. So like, for example, the most important part about those disasters are not even so much the donations and supplies. There's some stuff that they can't... So anything that you can't buy in town yeah. is what they need, which is why we took the 90,000 litres of water because it was farm uh, water uh, and why we took uh, hay, animal stock. You can't buy that from the shops there. By donating clothes and bottled water and stuff yeah. like that, you're actually taking away from the small economy That's in their to make money, yeah. So they've got their small businesses there trying to make money to stay alive because no one's coming through. Yet we're donating to 
the people surrounding that town, it but no one's them. buying, so it stops the economy. So, but how are we supposed to know that? No one's supposed yeah. to know that. Yeah. So by learning that stuff, it was it. So what I did, I went through and I took, you know, some of the donation money, and yeah. I went into the pub, and I would. Even, this is the worst part. We walked into a pub. They're not allowed to serve alcohol or food. They weren't allowed to because of the smoke warning or whatever it was. There was something ah. they weren't allowed to. It was almost classified as polluted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, guess what they did, man? They went out the back and they made 10 lunches for us and gave 10 drinks uh, for free because they couldn't wow. sell it. They didn't. Yeah. So, like, we were just left. Like, I went out and there was like a, a tip jar. So, I put like a thousand bucks in their tip jar. Then I went into those shops, a thousand bucks in that tip jar. Wow. So, I just did the, See, like, small. Bring it back. Bring it back. Yeah. So, that I was like, that, that was out of all the donations, that was like the best one that I like loved I doing. Love and it's that. like. I just wanted to get up and up close and experience it. I mean, I, I met like all the CFA different fighters. Yeah. I met the Army Reserves. Yeah. I actually drove to East Gippsland. I met the mayor. I gave him a check for $150,000, yeah. which that goes wow, directly man. to the community yeah. there. I met like, you know what I mean? Like everyone where I donated, I met yeah. were affected. And tell me this, right? Did you see the pain people's faces and eyes, man? Did you see like, because they would have been going through so much, right? So, it was pretty much what like I saw was this is ex- it's exactly what they predicted happened. They said there's always a massive spike. Yeah. You get an like a bizarre amount of attention and help. Yeah. But then what happens? It drops off. And yeah. the worst part is it's the rebuilding from the next six to twelve months afterwards, afterwards yeah. which kills them. I mean, like one of the places I went to, I had to get a forty-five minute. Um, fire truck escort in there just to get in there because everything was burnt out there around so that the cfa 45 minute escort to get us into this one small town yeah. what they said was you know we rely on people coming through our town yeah. how long is it going to be before people before start people coming through here again wow man. so that's the problem it's now the next three two to the fires are burnt out and stuff yeah. so like people when it's not in your face yeah. you forget yeah, so like forget, I, I yeah. go there and you see that and you hear them talk about it and it makes so much more sense when you hear it from them about yeah. you know how they survive is through people coming through there and if it's all burnt out who yeah. what reason do anyone have to we'll come have to go back there even though the fires aren't burning I mean like so that to me that's where the pain sat it was yeah. you could see them forward thinking about what's going to happen gonna happen it's three, just six, 12 months and uh, whether uh, is this going to survive are we going to survive or that, that that was where the pain was and I think they, they all seemed so resilient about what was going on actually at the time. It's yeah. like they almost didn't want your help. That's how still resilient they just, were. Yeah, they're, they're just, just, they're just focused it. on getting on with it yeah. what's next. That's our protective mechanism a lot of times, right? Yep. When something happens, we just step up, especially in Australia, man. Like, you know, I was born in Iran and I came here. I've been here for 32 years. And I'll tell you something, man. I'm so patriotic when it comes to this country. I fucking love this country yeah. so much because we have such good people. Yep. We are such beautiful humans in Australia. Everywhere else is beautiful too, but here we just you know that mateship yeah you know, that mateship that you know that everything's going wrong we gather yeah. and we help each other yeah and we look after each other and everything and that and i'm so blessed that i get to bring my kids up in this beautiful country oh. you know and and like it's just it's just phenomenal so that said right that's i know we spoke about it a little bit but i want to talk about it a little bit more that doco came out yesterday yeah so it was launched yesterday yeah i heard something about it just going crazy like just so much many people just getting on trying yeah. to watch it so what happened yeah the document so my dad sat down and he obviously so what I, did dad do so Sorry. my dad was an afl player he's this is so the, the what the documentary yeah. touched on is like his mental health journey people see angry dad and who he was but no one yeah. knows what got him to that point of his yeah. life i mean when you think about it someone who can blow their top off that quickly has a bit going on inside, you know what yeah. I mean? Like, that's what... <laughs> you never think about it, but you're wrong, like that, man. But, you yeah. know, people like what... So he sat down and he talks about what got him to this person. And I guess for him, it was... He played AFL and he was, you know, suspected to be a very, very good player. But something yeah. that he had no control over was injury. He had seven, eight screws in his foot, seven yeah. different operations. And he could just, you know, he couldn't play anymore. Yeah. But what people don't see with that is, yeah, people might go, oh, it's just footy, there's plenty yeah. more. But that's someone's dream. And they oh, have wow, that dream man. in their hands, yeah, and then it's just ripped out from under them, and it without no control. It's nothing to do with what you're doing. You're good enough. Yeah. You're you're in the perfect position. You've done everything right. It's yeah. something you have zero control over, yeah. and it's just taken from under you. Yeah. So he he struggled with that for a long. He says 2015 years. As you will, man. Especially being Australian bloke, and back then 
the blokey thing was to get on with it, right? Well, and not talk about it. you told one person in that 15 years and it was my mum. Oh, man, it. I'm not your mum for the first time a couple of years ago. What a beautiful lady, right? I'm getting teased once. What a beautiful lady. She's She's got this warm heart. Yeah. You can feel it right away when you meet her, right? Yeah. And like, at the same time, God bless her because imagine the told that would have had on her hand. Well, it did. She, they, yeah. In the documentary, they speak about her, their marriage and the stuff yeah. on the kids that... Well, my dad even speaks about it on two or three different times. You know that he, there was it was one or two minutes longer than yeah. he probably wouldn't even be here today to Sweet. to talk about it. And it's, it shows like behind closed doors, you never know what's, what's going, going on, on with someone else. Nice, so that's man. why I think now, like, it's so important to change that stigma and have everyone talking about it. So you you know and you're aware. Like, yeah. at least if I know you, Sam Bashiri, yeah. you're. If I know what you struggle with, and I know your no. triggers, and I know everything, no. I know how to help that. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. If, I don't, yeah. if I don't know about it, it's so easy for you to sit back and judge right. people and do yeah. something like that. So I feel like as men now, to be able to talk about your feelings, your problems, everything like that, let all your friends know, let all your family know, let everyone know. It's not a burden. No, it's not. You know what not. I mean? It's, it's not a real. burden. It's, it's real. It's normal. What happens to everyone and to talk about it. And I feel like it will go a long way. So, bro, when you, this is what I'm interested in. Yep. Like, you know, you mentioned before that you're from Iran. Yeah, I was born in Iran. Yeah. So, tell me, like, I know this is gonna like gonna be long winded, <laughs> but tell yeah. me, how do you go from Iran? Yeah. To Australia. Yeah. To this. Okay, so, ten years old. There was a war in Iran between yeah. Iran and Iraq. I, I grew up in the capital city, Tehran. Towards the air, towards the end of the war, the Iraq had the actual capabilities to send missiles and bombs to the capital city. So a lot of the time, people in Tehran didn't get harmed because it used to uh, be closer to the border of Iraq because they were neighbors. So all the small towns used to get hit all the time. Towards the end, I remember as a kid living in an apartment with my family, my mom and dad and sister, and hearing the sirens. And when you hear the sirens, you have to run, hide somewhere. And then all you see, as you're running to go and hide, you can see the missiles fly no. by. Yeah, man. You can hear the missiles, and you can hear them, you can see them fly by. And the next thing you hear is just, ball, right? And all you think is, fuck, did they get us? Or is it somebody else, right? And then the sirens go off, and you walk out, and you go for a walk, and you see a whole street just demolished, right? You see oh. people dead in the street. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, man. Yeah, so my parents basically said to me one day, we're gonna pack our bags, we're gonna leave, right? Had no idea where we were going, what we are going to do, nothing, right? And for us, we couldn't get into the country because we didn't have a visa. So we came here illegally, right? Yeah. And, and basically couldn't speak a word of English. Me, my mum and sister came to Australia, came to Melbourne. And um, we were locked up in a detention centre for two years, right? Because they needed to find, obviously the government needed to find out who we are, yeah. why we're here, which is all fair and we're going to go through the due process. And I remember um, basically going to having to go to school not being able to speak English, um, coming to a whole new environment, uh, not knowing what to do. Um, it was pretty scary, man. But like, at the same time, I was quite young, right? Um, but I can just imagine how scary it would have been for my mum to get up and come here without my father. Uh, you know, having to, like, you know... So did your dad just sacrifice that to get... He did, man. He had to. Yeah, so he had say, to. So he came after... Six, five or six years later, my dad came. So I grew up without my dad here. So I grew up pretty quickly. I had to be man of the house. Yeah. You know, I had to look after my parents as much as I could. And, you know, for me... Um, it was pretty tough, but like you said with the fires, right? You just have to get on with it. Yeah. So at that moment, it was just survival mode, right? I had to just do what I had to do. Right? Not to mention, like, the amount of resilience and stuff you would have, especially from where you came from. I yeah. mean, like, yeah, going to school and not knowing how to speak English <laughs> yeah. is scary, but also walking out into the middle of a war torn country yeah. with missiles, like, that's scary. Yeah, it is. You know man. what I mean? It is, man. And, like, and you know what? I think, like, in life, unfortunately, you know, Life plays you a different card, good or bad. Yeah. Um, bad's no good. No one deserves that. But that's just life, right? And you basically decide that what do you want to, what are you going to do about it, right? Are you going to take that and use it as fuel to move forward and become a stronger person and to make something out of your life, or are you going to become a victim and say, well, this is what happened? And, it's and one yes, of my favorite quotes: "You can either be the victor or yeah. the victim." There it's you go, you. mate. There you go. It's up to you. And we all have our problems in different ways, right? Yeah. We all have our problems in different ways, and it's not right. It's not fair. It shouldn't happen, but it happens. That's just life, right? But you've got to take that. And you know, for me, one of the things that pushed me was, and you know, made me to become who I am today was that I wanted to, in my own little way, make sure that 
I became successful, but I made sure that I could make a difference in other people's life that were going through what I was going through at a later stage, right? Yeah. And for me to be able to do that, I had to have the tools to do it, okay? So for me, um, I went and worked in an IT company for a number of years in tech support. I was getting paid $7.50 an hour, that's where I started, right? I used to work my ass off, man. I used to go in early, leave late, and then after a number of years, I thought, you know what? Everyone that calls me is always angry because the internet doesn't work. <laughs> I'm sick of this job. I want to move into sales. I went into sales, and in 2005, um, you know, I didn't sit there come up with a business plan. I had no business plan, nothing, right? I just thought, you know what? Fuck it. There's a there's a niche in the market for someone that's a mid- middle sized player that's carrier neutral, which means that you know we just basically like I select up internet in a yeah. way, right? And um and I went out there and I started a business. I had a thousand dollars, which I took out on my credit card as cash advance. I used that thousand dollars to uh, register a domain name, create a website, and that's how I started the business, man. You know, and now you know the business has been going for fifteen years. We look after uh, probably 85% of all the hotels in Australia. So basically, if you stay in a hotel, use the internet in your room, it's ours. And then um, I've done that for 15 years. And then um, a year and a half ago, I thought, you know, I'm in a place now that I have the tools to give back and help other people. And the only way I'm going to do that is to be able to step away from what I do day to day. So I hired a CEO in the last two years that runs the business for me day to day. And it's allowed me to be where I am today and mate I'll tell you something right which that wasn't a quick journey that's 15 years, 15 years six, yeah, man, so yeah. for 15 years you've had something that's been going like that yeah. but you've still started you know what I mean yeah, people I feel like a lot of people like you know after two or three or four years once yeah. they start to get that yeah. success yeah. that's when they taper off you know what I mean because they get comfortable 100% man you know what there was a lot of times a lot of times that I wanted to give up Yeah. right there's a lot of times that you know I remember my daughter's first birthday um, I was on the phone answering textable calls to the company because we had an outage, right? So I didn't actually get to be part of that birthday that year. And you know, first birthdays are so important, right? And you know, I went through a lot of sleepless nights. I went through nights that I was crying and I was saying to my wife, like, what have you done? Have you made the right choice? Things are hard, you know? But I didn't give up, man. Yeah. And that's the thing. And exactly what you said, people think that if you start something, or just take off, right? It doesn't work like that. <laughs> it doesn't work like that. If it was like that, then it'd everyone, be easy. Would everyone would do it. So you gotta have resilience, man. Like I think a couple of things that's very important to me is passion yeah. and resilience, right? And never give up. All. And I have always say it's not the smart ones that win; it's the persistent ones that win, right? So true. Uh, and I for me, that. and for me, man. Like now, it's about feeding my soul, right? It's not about the cars and the fancy stuff. It's about feeding your soul. And the only way I can feed my soul is by giving back and having beautiful people in my life, like yourself, that take their time out. We don't get any pay. We don't do anything, but just want to do the same thing and yep. all I want to do is just create a community of these people where we get all together and we all give back in our own way you know what I mean and that's really really important to me and I feel like this is like that's literally the depth of what this discussion is about uh, so that's yeah, that's up, awesome man. because I love how with a lot of entrepreneurial stuff and a lot of business stuff like I feel like every day I'm seeing some new entrepreneur or new person who's you know uploading a photo of a lion's head saying like you can either be the lion or the sheep you know what I mean that sort of stuff but you know that's not like that's not what people want to see like I want to see like a successful entrepreneur who is real who's been through a journey who's got to the top who's got everything that you know yeah. you think that you'd want yeah. but he's still looking for that more and still looking to give back still looking yeah. to be stimulated from helping others because yeah. I feel like a lot of people who want it once yeah. they get to the position like yourself yeah. now yeah. they think yeah. fuck everyone I've yeah. done it. you know yeah. what I mean that's, and, and, and that's I'm a lot so of against that man yeah. and I'm so against that I think what it comes out is because you think about it you could have easily gone I've oh. come from Iran I started with a thousand dollars. I've got how many staff do you have? Forty staff. Yeah, really. I've got yeah, forty man. staff. Yeah. You know, I did the hotel for eighty-five percent. I've yeah. got all my cars. I've got yeah. what I want. <laughs> Fuck everyone else. Yeah. I'm gonna live my life. Yeah. But it's true. How easy could you? Yeah, hundred percent, bro. But you know, that would have freed my soul. Correct. Uh, that would have make me happy. That would make me really miserable. It'd be all fake. You yeah. know, like we were talking about in the inside. I wouldn't be happy. And you know. You can't buy happiness, man. You can buy toys, you can buy that, but you can't buy happiness. You can't buy genuine happiness, right? Which is why I reckon, like, it's no. what's awesome from people to hear what they'll understand from yeah. this, too. And, like, it's it's not corny at all. Is yeah. like, 
they would probably be seeing everything that you know you've got and a lot of people have and go this is what I want but at yeah. the end of the day you're still the most important part to you 100%, is, is happiness and 100%. just feeding your soul which everybody can do yeah. everyone can feed their soul it doesn't cost a dollar to feed yeah. your soul with the right stuff 100% and also at the same time like for me to do this stuff you know it's quite new to me right so it actually puts me out of my comfort zone Right, and it makes me feel vulnerable again. If you're not, if you're, if you're comfortable, you're not growing. Hundred percent, man. So now it puts me out of my comfort zone. I feel vulnerable, and I'm learning, yeah. and I'm growing again. Like I'm learning, like you know, you know what you guys do is so cool. And for you, what you guys have achieved and everything at the same time it looks, it sounds normal, but it's not normal, <laughs> right? Not everybody can do what you can do, right? But the only way to do it is to actually look for new challenges in life. Yep. Pursue new things. Put yourself out there. Hundred percent. And what's the worst thing that can happen? The worst thing that can happen is that you walk away. You've learned so much more than exactly. when you walked in with, right? Yep. And like it's like I get DMs on Instagram. People are like, I'm afraid that I will fail. And I, you know what I say to them, man? If they are starting a new business, I'm afraid that I will fail. And the thing I say today is that you've already failed by not even doing anything. Yeah. Well, you, this is the thing. You can live with failure, but you can't live with regret. You know what I mean, you can't imagine. I'm, I'm more than happy to try something, yeah. and have a fail. I'm not embarrassed. Yeah. But if I never try it, I'll think oh. about that forever. Exactly. I'll go, what if? What if? What if? What if? What if? I wonder if I did this. Yeah. I wonder if I tried. Exactly, hundred percent. So tell me, you like cars? <laughs> so this is my my thing with cars is this. I actually. I, I had a deal with Mercedes for three months. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I had the JLC. Yes. AMG. Yes, yes. yes. And that, that that made me fall in love with cars. I never had appreciation okay. for cars. Yeah. I never understood yeah. why people, you know, got so obsessed with cars yeah. until I drove that thing for three months. Yeah. And then you fell in love with them. I fell in love with yeah. it. The I love sound, cars. just the feeling of the paddle yeah. shifts. Yeah. The <laughs> like I just, and it got me, it hooked me. And yeah. now, I do, I very yeah. much like it. So we're in a Lamborghini Hurricane Spider today. It's a V10 engine, I've been told. <laughs> and, and it is a beast. You like it, man? Oh, it's crazy. Um, it's, it's, you know, it's funny because, you know, um, I went to LA a number of years ago and I rented a Ferrari. It was a Ferrari 458. And I felt guilty for renting. It was just very expensive, right? <laughs> I thought, you know what, fuck it, I deserve it, I'm going to treat myself. So I drove it, I went down Malibu and all that, and I fell in love with the ride. Yeah. Came back to Australia, bought my first uh, Ferrari, which is a Ferrari 488. Since then I've had like five or six Ferraris, never had a Lamborghini, alright? So last year I stepped into this Lamborghini for the first time. It's yellow, it's loud, it's so wrong, but it's so right, yeah. right? <laughs> But if you're getting a Lamborghini, it's going to be loud anyway, you may as well go yellow. <laughs> yellow, right? And I love it, man. What I love about this car is, um, number one, it makes me feel young. Yeah, because I feel like okay. I've seen the go-kart. Because, you know, you can't oh. see the front. If you've uh, never sat in a Lamborghini, yeah. let me tell you, it feels like you're going to get gravel rash on your ass. <laughs> I feel like, some, like I'm literally just going along the concrete. My ass is this far away from the ground. There you go. All right? And I love it. And I love the sound. So I've left the car its original state. And yeah. I don't think the only thing I did was I got a Lamborghini to uh, install a Lamborghini exhaust, which gives it that sound, right? Which I love, right? Um, but it's just so much fun. It's And you know what? When I'm having a bad day at work, or when I'm tired and I've just had enough, and I get into this car or the others or whatever, and I turn the engine on, it just makes me happy. Yeah, yeah it just it makes me feel like a little kid again. Of course. Right? And it makes me feel like you know what? All the hard work and everything it's, it's worth, worth it. it. And you know, everybody has a different passion. Some people like cars. Some people like fishing. Some people like golf. One of the things that I encourage is to go out there. <laughs> to, go, so hey, to go out there and see like little so boys like me. That. That's, what, that's what, what I used to be like. Yeah, I used to be that little boy yeah. on my bicycle and say, one day I'm gonna <laughs> yeah. buy that, right? Uh, but what it does is it actually like I think it's very important that you treat yourself. Of course. Yeah, you feed your soul with whatever makes you well, happy. Well, we've we've spoken a lot about you know feeding soul and doing everything. Yeah. It's still okay to have materialistic goals in yeah, place. Yeah, you know course, what I mean? Because yeah. it's human, of and course. also it's human to have an ego. It's, yes. This is like we talk about. That's you know, so getting rid of about everyone has an ego, yes. but it's just about recognizing your ego. Yeah. And you're allowed to have something that stimulates your ego as long yeah. as you're still a good person. Your ego yeah. doesn't take place. Hundred percent. This car is obviously going to make you feel good when yeah. you drive it. It's yeah. loud. It gets attention. But yeah. you know what? As long as at the end of the that day you're a fucking good person, it doesn't change your ego. You're still allowed to enjoy a nice car. Hundred percent, bro. And you know, I always say. Everything can disappear tomorrow. You'll be the same person because those things don't define you as a human. Correct. You are who you are. These things are just for fun. They don't yeah. define you. They don't raise you, elevate you to a different level to anybody else. We're all the same, right? 
but you obviously worked hard enough and you know you, you should can be enjoy able to the fruits of your labor 100 percent. there's nothing wrong with that and one of the things that i like to talk about is that you know unfortunately um and it's maybe uh, we have this tall puppy syndrome sometimes in australia yeah. right and and I'm, and what, and, but it's, it's actually changing with the young generation. I can see more and more the young people out there. It's changing, and they don't feel like that anymore. You know, yeah. but it's good in a way because it allows us to encourage and push other people with our success to do what they want to do. Well, it, I've always I, I've been a massive believer of blowing out somebody else's candle doesn't make yours shine brighter. I and love I think that, it's the truest man. thing ever. I mean, like. People that try to bring others down to put them up, like uh-huh. to put yourself up, it just doesn't work. It doesn't it's work. Ugly man. It is. It it's is. Ugly. And, and we can all achieve everything. Like together. Had this had lolly to... <laughs> She's like, like how many times have you been around? Right? But it allows us to still like do our thing. Yeah. Because there's so much out there for everyone. You know? Yeah. Like, I think people like us, we don't have an abundance issue. You know what I mean? There's enough out there for everybody. A lot of people have these abundance issues where they think there's only so, so much out there and so much just for them. But yeah. it's not true. Yeah, exactly right. So you know what I want to do, Mitch? Have you driven a Lamborghini before? <laughs> never, You've ever, never, ever, driven ever, a Lamborghini. never driven I've never driven. But GLC is the, the okay. only car I've got behind the wheel. So you know what, us. man? We're going to change that today. Okay? Uh, <laughs> We're gonna change it today. This right? is our insurance. Ah, <laughs> uh, fuck the insurance on that, right? <laughs> so we're gonna change that today. We're gonna get you behind the wheel, right? And I want you to fucking feel the roll, the fucking sound. I'm gonna be. You know what I'm gonna be doing the whole time? What? Just manifesting. I'm just gonna be holding God, the wheel. God the bless. Wheel. God bless, bro. I'm so big on that. And on that too. You know, I manifested that day when I borrowed that car, rented that car in LA, bro. And it's funny. A lot of my stuff so for my Christmas party. You know, this year, I didn't tell anyone what we were doing. I got two buses, I filled everyone up, I hired a racetrack, <coughs> and no one knew. And they thought, where are we going? So we're going to go out somewhere for lunch. We pulled up to the racetrack, man, and everybody got out. I had my cars lined up, and i never forget the look on their face. Were they so excited? Oh, they were, man. And they got behind the wheel, and they drove, and then at the end, they all said, thank you, you know? That's and I so said, nice. And I said, no, thank you. And they go, what do you mean? I said, without my team, I could not have any of these cars. If it wasn't because of the hard work they put in every day, I wouldn't have anything. So I said, this is not mine, this is ours. And I said, I I feel blessed to be able to share this gift with everybody, man. And dude, it, it was such a great bonding experience. I was experience, about to say, yeah? that would have been one of those yeah. like just mic drop moments where you're all like, oh, you're yeah. all realize you're in this together. 100%. And it was it was just crazy. And like, the reaction I got back from the guys and, and the girls afterwards was phenomenal. And you know what's so funny, dude? Like, uh, I was like never big on car clubs and all that. But I learned that it's actually so cool because you get to meet people that have things in common and it brings everyone together. You know, and yeah. all from different walks of life, right? But you all come together. You have that one thing that brings you together, which is the car. Ah. And then, um, and then you know, you just get to enjoy it. I want to try something, right? So we're gonna go from sports to Corsa. So when you're driving this car by yourself, don't do bare ass in the Corsa because you'll wrap around the pole. Yeah. Well, I don't <laughs> but know I want you to, to hear it. Anyway. I want you to hear it, man, because it makes a massive difference in the sound. Listen to that sound, right? Oh, <laughs> yeah. the back wire. You let it go here. <laughs> so you can hear the exhaust. Like <laughs> so hear the uh, exhaust. Pop. Holy uh, shit, bro! Yeah, man, pretty cool. So huh? What's that actually difference do to the car then? So what well, it does it? It's locking me up. <laughs> so you got from, you got the different settings, which gives you different traction control. It gives you a different sound. It gives you a different feeling to the car, man, right? So if you go on the track and all that, you want to have it on Corsa because it goes tighter, tighter suspension. I know, I'm locked Yeah, man. Bro. Yeah, man, it's pretty fucking cool. Very fucking cool. Bro. <laughs> Holy shit, man. That was like a new car. Yeah, man. Yeah, it is. Yeah, just switch yeah, into just a new car. Just switches, man. Right, man. <laughs> Once you do that, 
totally fuck up. So in Corsa 2, you gotta change your gear to one of the automatic. Oh, so you gotta paddle shift. Yeah, yeah, you gotta paddle shift it, otherwise it won't change it. Okay. So auto is just in a strata. So yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's strata. Yeah, so, yeah, so you got strata, and then if you want to go auto, you gotta press manual again. So M, yeah. M makes it auto, and you press it, it goes on auto, but now it's auto, but when oh, you're ready, the, yeah, 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 A, so that's where you press. And when you, I'll tell you, so this is reverse, you gotta pull this up. Yep. Yeah, but when you stop, you gotta press this like that. The parking brake. Yeah, yep. and then you gotta press P too. If you don't press P, you won't stop. So you gotta do that, and you gotta press P, and it'll show it up there. Okay. And then you're good to go, right? Oh, unless you go to Corsa, <laughs> you gotta. Use I've been sitting out the front of Crown with Chloe googling how to park a Lamborghini Huracan. <laughs> it's too good. Trying to pretend it's my car. <laughs> Yeah, that, that's how it comes apart. I've been there before, man, and I tried to put petrol in one. I was, oh, no, I was about to say, bro, yeah, I've man. actually done yeah. it in the G-Rack, and I had to put fill out petrol, yeah. and I was so embarrassed yeah. that I didn't yeah. know how to do it. That's, yeah, it's bad. It's like, okay, it's not his car. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, all right, you got me. <laughs> oh, let me just call my friend. <laughs> let me call for help. <laughs> uh, too funny. You know what's funny? Do you get, feel like you get special privilege when you're driving these people that you're right. in and shit? Sometimes. Because whenever I see a car like this, yeah, always yeah, let yeah, it yeah, in. Man. Sometimes, man, but what it does also is that, like, you get a lot of attention and sometimes you feel uncomfortable, man. Yeah. Like, you feel like a dick. So I, I try and pretend like I'm riding SMS or something, which is illegal, which I don't do while I'm driving, obviously. Like, uh, <laughs> but, yeah, you gotta just, uh, yeah, you just gotta be, you just gotta be careful, man. All right, bro. Well, that's an absolute experience and a half driving the car. But I think the best thing out of that was that's an hour of stimulating conversation, bro. And it was absolutely uh, a pleasure, thank man. Thank you, man. And you know, again, it's good that we kept it real, kept it. No scripts, and you know what? I appreciate you making the time, especially after last night with the doco, man. So I know you guys would have a lot going on. So I appreciate it. Thank you for sharing your journey. Thank you for being real. Thank you for being vulnerable. Yeah. And you know, I really appreciate it. And thank you for making my day and everybody else's day. And that's what this is all about. Thanks, heaps, bro. I really Thanks, appreciate man. it. I love Thanks, you. everyone thank who you. watched it. Don't forget to follow this journey. I think Sam's got an incredible story and so much more to share. So does this guy. <laughs> so thanks for tuning in guys. Thank you. Love bless.